about the Crazy Coast Council uh, permanent uh, art collection. A lot of these works have never been seen by the public. And the reason behind that is that we've never really had anywhere to store them. So when Gadigas opened 10 years ago, we had a racking system that was surplus to the needs of the regional gallery. And we brought that into the art space during construction. So that was factored into uh, the storeroom space. And we were able to um, then hang a lot of the works in there. There was a large uh, number of works still in the Mirabara Admin Centre. And as uh, over the years, they were hung in council offices, in the corridors of the space, um, and a couple of the larger works, there's a large Indigenous work in the corridor upstairs, and a large one of Jenny McDuff's, which, which were hanging on the first floor in the admin centre for as long as I can remember, so that was sort of 20 years ago. So nobody really got to see the works on display. We've, over the years, so we've, we've had our anniversary this year, which is 10 years of Gadigas, and we have had a couple of exhibitions in Gallery 3 where we brought out a small selection of the artworks, but that's pretty much it. So this is the first time that, um, that we've uh, taken over the gallery, and we're going to take over four gallery spaces, uh, and then we had the works of the Call, Call the Explorer, so we decided to break it up a little bit um, to give a little bit of diversity to the show. We also found, um, as part of that uh, council collection, we came across this uh, diversity uh, along the line and that, uh, I'll have a chat about, about that a little bit later, but that's like an artist's books and we had those mounted and then framed in our gallery frames upstairs. The so Cara Ann Simpson's a new curator at the Regional Gallery in Harvey Bay and uh, Cara has got her, a team together to create our collections management policy. So as part of that collections management, it was um, finding the works, assessing their quality and condition. So condition reporting, photographing, and then cataloguing everything. So they're photographing the works in the council offices, uh, condition reporting, and then putting them back in, in, in place. I can't really take too much credit for the curation of this show because all of the works had already been, they're all out along, along the walls in all of the spaces. And Nicole and I went through and we did a pre-selection of works. And, um, and looking at the space, uh, we, we selected them and put them in, in groups. And uh, so we're happy with that lot. And then we went through and started the hanging with uh, uh, Lois and Morris. So we looked at the larger works first because we, sort of, we knew that they would command the most uh, space. And, um, and then we worked back from there. Um, so this work is by uh, Ben Johansson. Uh, we had, an, we had a uh, solo exhibition of Ben's work a few years ago. And the particular style, uh, Ben explains that it's an exploration of colour through movement and repetition. Um, as we make our way along this wall, we've got um, this painting of the Diamantina by David Craven, and we just happen to have David here today. Uh, and you might, it, we might ask him to say a few words about his work. Thanks, Tony. Hello, um, my name's David Craven. This is a work I did a few years ago. Um, it's a, the Diamantina was named after the Diamantina River in Western Queensland. And it was built in Walkers about to, oh, 1943 when they first laid the first foundations for it. And it was commissioned in 1944, I think, and decommissioned again in 1946. But it saw uh, some, you know, whilst up in uh, Bougainville and around the, the north, around New Guinea and stuff. And then it, when it was decommissioned after that, it wasn't recommissioned again until about 1959, I think it was. And um, it became an oceanography ship. Uh, moving around Australia in the deeper oceans and stuff and photographic, or it would be photographic, it would be sonar of all the, uh, like the scape underneath the seascape. And um, after that, it went on to about 1980 where it was decommissioned and it spent a lot of time in Perth and it was run down and that. And then the Naval uh, Maritime Museum got hold of it just after that, and um, it's been there ever since. And I dedicated this one to um, some of the volunteers that have spent hours and hours and years um, 
bringing it back to life. And now it's just a nice, beautiful example of a ship built by walkers. I mean, walkers built um, seven corvettes, which were a much smaller ship, but this one's about close to 300 feet long, or 100 and around 90 metres, I think, overall, or 95, something like that anyway. And um, it shows you what they did in Mariborough back in that time. So, yeah, I dedicated that to all those volunteers that brought it back to life, and it's well worth looking at that ship. A beautiful uh, artist who's recently passed away, Joyce Bott. Joyce was a volunteer here uh, for 10 years. She drew every day too uh, at Station Square. She'd take a little sketchbook and draw the, the people around them unbeknownst to them. This, this work, um, when we did a little bit of research on Glenn, I found out that he'd won the first prize in the Vera Art um, Awards uh, quite a number of times. So this one would have been uh, one of those winning entries. Uh, the, these two works um, we, we purchased um, from our annual budget uh, for acquisitions, and, and they came from the um, Correctional Centre in Maribyrnong. The Correctional Centre held uh, um, an exhibition every year at the Brolka Theatre. Um, sadly, that no longer happens anymore, but um, certainly the, the quality of the artwork was really of a very high standard, so we're lucky to have those ones. Small work by Gus McCauley. So Gus is uh, one of the brothers, uh, uh, probably uh, one of uh, three or four brothers, and they're all very creative. We had a, an exhibition last year by Tom McCauley. Um, we just broke up the space with a few sculptures. This artist, uh, Kevin Yartsey, was brought up um, in, in partnership with the Harvey Bay Potters Group and the Regional Gallery. And Kevin would have made these pieces uh, during the workshop series. Quite a, quite a beautiful work by Terry's. And there's also a very large uh, mural that he's painted at the Carrier's Arms Hotel. Uh, this work has been painted by uh, Kevin Oxley. Uh, Kevin used to live in Maribyrnong and uh, he uh, worked from a studio above one of the shops in Adelaide Street where he gave uh, um, classes. Uh, he, moved, he then moved up to the Sunshine Coast hinterland to Montville and they opened up a gallery called the Kevin Oxley Gallery. And then he moved uh, into private practice uh, at his home studio. This is a wonderful illustration by the late Dorothy Hall. Uh, Dorothy lived and worked in, in the region and this is the cover illustration from one of her children's books by the name of Wuku. Uh, Dorothy also uh, completed the illustrations for The Legend of Mount Popple and a, a small uh, illustrated book uh, called The Littlest Honey Eater and uh, the text was uh, done by a local Indigenous elder, Olga Miller. So this uh, is a portrait of Alan Brown. Uh, Alan was the mayor of Maribyrnong for many years. The artist, uh, Cassia Hartman. Uh, also, the larger sculpture uh, that fronts the Brolga Theatre was also created by Cassia as well. Works are by uh, local artist Marnie Costa. Marnie is Harvey Bay artist. She works uh, primarily in um, stone, uh, marble and granite. So this one is the, um, the winning entry in last year's uh, Harvey Bay Art Society Awards and it comes to us as, as that acquisitive prize, so part of the council collection. Uh, we've got another little one here by uh, Joyce Spot, a little fairly uh, uh, watercolour. Not too sure, um, we didn't have a lot of information about this one, but um, that's certainly unusual style and uh, colour palette, so that kind of needed a, a wall of its own, also because of the size. Um, this one, this, uh, this is a pastel up here of the swan. So this is um, by local artist Beth Phillips, and Beth uh, owns the White Bay Gallery. So she's a bit of a master of um, pastel. And, and light. This, uh, this is a lovely work, um, also an award-winning uh, uh, piece by uh, Pat Hall. Uh, Pat um, is no longer with us, uh, but um, she had a beautiful, uh, unique style and quite, 
quite prolific artist as well. So we've got um, a couple of works, one here by Brian Elston and one across the road. Uh, Brian was a Sunshine Coast artist and uh, we've got a few of his in the collections. A couple of works here by um, local artist Carol Seeger and uh, Carol lives in Harvey Bay. She's been um, primarily uh, uh, painting, printmaking. She's one of the um, one of our local Gadigas Gad um, uh, print space members. A little work here, I'm, I'm assuming that one's um, an, an early work by Rebecca McDuff. So she's the daughter of uh, Jenny McDuff and it's got a fairly childlike quality about it, but it's really well resolved. So I did take a photo of that and send it to Jenny and um, mm -hmm. yeah, they were pretty excited that we've still got that in the collection. Uh, this one over here is uh, uh, Val McIntosh and uh, Patrice has taken a video of Val talking about that particular work and the process. Uh, we've got one by uh, Henry Brakers. Uh, Henry always oh, pretty much had a show here each year since we opened, so uh, it's good to see Henry um, uh, represented in this particular exhibition. Uh, we've got another one of Joyce Box. Joyce had that quite unique quality of painting with the fingers. So she, she'd come in every um, Gadigas by night and she'd do a portrait. So she'd finish a portrait uh, on, on, on those particular event nights and she'd do it all with the fingers. So it's, she'd have a sitter there and you know, within an hour or so, they'd walk away with a, a fairly wet portrait of themselves and uh, all painted, yeah, but, uh, yeah, very, very unique. Uh, and then this one over here, I'll just draw your attention to that one. That one is uh, Jenny McDuss. Um, I don't have a lot of information about that one, but uh, that always hung in the foyer of the Maribara Admin Centre. Uh, the, other, the other one, um, um, this one was again uh, an award winner. I did find a little bit of um, information about um, uh, Sylvia Ditchburn, uh, and that was the uh, Open Award winner and the judge, John Massey, from the Queensland Art Gallery. So it's kind of interesting that uh, the show did attract some great judges and some wonderful work. Our sister city uh, relationships, and we thought we'd hang one of those up just to represent um, that contribution uh, from, from them. And uh, beautiful silk, uh, silk work. We found a box, and that box is one of a limited edition of artist books, and the, uh, the title was uh, Diversity Along the Line, and that was uh, made up of 20 artists and um, uh, 60 books. So we, we had uh, the works uh, mounted, uh, and then we used our gallery frames. So we just wanted to add a little bit of a point of difference between uh, the works downstairs and these ones. So it's a little bit more uniform, but um, still looks pretty good, very polished. Mm -hmm. So we're really surprised when we, we, we went through those works. Uh, there's a couple that I'll just um, read out a, a little bit of uh, background about a couple of the works. And the first one is the Max Lovell. So this is a reference, this particular one over here, to uh, two of his favourite themes, the art of Cy Twombly and The Simpsons. So Cy Twombly, the American artist, is an abstract expressionist who looked at ancient cultures and tribal artefacts in a direct and primary way. He is often described by fellow artists as the best damn scribbler in the business. Uh, the Simpsons is a snapshot of ordinary life and family values. It can be often, it can often make us feel uncomfortable when we recognise ourselves in the characters and the situations, but it does offer redemption and love even for losers. So this, this piece is based on one of the episodes, Lisa versus Mal Malibu Stacy. Uh, when Lisa buys a talking Malibu Stacy doll, she disco discovers that it can only utter vacuous phrases that reinforce sexist gender stereotypes. For example, don't ask me, I'm just a girl. So Lisa's complaints receive the standard corporate response. Believe me, we're all very mindful of such concerns from the all-male uh, boardroom of Malibu Stacey's manufacturer, the Petrochem Petrochemical Corporation, which in pursuit of profit before people also makes uh, caustic profits. 
This is a, an early one of, of Joe's. In uh, the journey of my life, my series getting there, I had had no map. I was programmed for fast travelling and getting there, arriving at the destination was the goal. And like all fast travellers without maps, I had to follow the signs and blindly follow others, trusting in their destination. I passed these same travellers all the way on a great roundabout of life, and like me looking for an exit sign and not knowing how to exit. If somebody were to inquire how you're going, I'd reply, getting there. I've come to realise that it's not, there does not exist. It is a place where no one dwells, but everybody is headed. The great paradox of life, so my diversity along the line, uh, my varied experiences along the life path have taught me this. A good traveller has no plans, but has ultimate faith in the journey. From the 90, probably from 1960 to 1970, Frank and Eunice Corley drove the suburban streets of Queensland in their pink Cadillac, taking photographs of houses and selling them to the homeowners. They thought we'd taken over a quarter of a million photographs of houses from Bundaberg to Beanley, and around two thirds of the photographs were sold to the householders. And the remaining 61,000 images were donated to the State Library in 1990. 